Hello again and welcome to another of my fretwork and or scroll sawing videos. There are quite a few groups on Facebook covering the hobby of fretwork and or scroll sawing. By the way I always call it fretworking but most people these days call it scroll saw working. Now a lot of these groups attract people who are new to the hobby and they ask various questions about fretwork and what I'm going to do in this series of videos is to try and address one or two of those questions and see if I can offer some answers, simple answers for people who are new to the hobby. So the first thing, let me just mention what I'm going to do in this series. I've got here a hobbies fretwork plan which is dated 1923. I'll take it out of his little folder. These are quite precious because they're very delicate. This is uh, almost 100 years old, 98 years old actually. And as you can see it's in immaculate condition. I'm just going to open it out. There we are. Now hopefully you can see the plan there. Now this is the original hobbies plan which is dated 1923. Now if you're knowing about the uh, old days of fret working, there were no copying facilities then and what you did when you got this design sheet, you simply cut the patterns out, pasted them onto your wood and then cut them out, thus destroying or sacrificing the pattern so it was no good. Uh, so what I do now, obviously I scan all these into the computer, I've got all these saved on my computer for future use and, and as I say they are quite precious because they are nearly 100 years old and they're quite rare these days. Now. When you try and cut a pattern out like this, my advice is, if you possibly can, don't print it out like this with, a, with, a, with it filled with colour because you will find it quite difficult cutting around something like that. Now this is the same pattern that I've created from the, the main pattern you see here. Now you'll notice on my pattern it's just a line drawing and that's much easier to cut out because you simply follow the line with your fret saw blade and it's much more clear which bits you have to cut out and which bits you leave in and I find it much easier cutting out from this outline pattern rather than this block pattern. All I do is to put these on the computer and then I use some photo editing software, there's various ones, free ones as well as paid for ones. I've been using Photoshop for many years so I do them on Photoshop. Uh, and this particular one's easy because you just highlight it and then change the, the, the colour of it and put an outline on. But I won't go into that now because it's another story but basically what I'm saying is it is easier cutting an outline than it is a blocked pattern like this, in, in my opinion. Others might have a different view on that. One of the questions a lot of people who are new to scroll saw work and ask is what sort of wood should I use to cut the patterns out with? Well there are various options, some people use MDF, I don't like MDF, I think it's horrible stuff. It's not nice, it's got um, dangerous dust in it because of the formaldehyde in the glue they used. And it's just not nice material to work with and it's not very strong. So that leaves really plywood or hardwood, solid hardwood. So you can use softwood, but generally speaking it is quite delicate in thin panels. So if you're doing thinner stuff, then probably plywood's the best option. If you're doing thick blocky things, then you can use thicker softwoods, you know, pine, European redwood, spruce, all those sort of things, but you've got to be careful for knots and resin pockets and things in softwood. So plywood's probably one of the best options, or as I say, you can use some hard wood if you can get it. Before I go into that, I'll just show you two designs I've done, one on plywood and one on hardwood, so you can get an idea before we start. Uh, this is a design I cut a couple of years ago. Uh, as you can see, it's cut out entirely in plywood, and what I've done, I've put a couple of sheets of coloured paper behind it or card just to highlight it and then I put a simple piece of hardboard on the back just to protect that. Now this is the same design from 1911 and this time I cut it out in a mahogany look-alike and, and the two cyclists are cut out of a bit of maple. So basically the choice is yours, plywood or hardwood. Actually I think they're both nice but the plywood stands out a lot doesn't it? Now the first thing to talk about is hardwood or sheets of hardwood. Uh, this is this is more difficult to get. You, you won't find this in your local DIY store or anything. In actual fact, if you look closely, this is some I've actually manufactured myself from narrow strips of wood and glued it. If you're interested in seeing how I make these panels up, uh, if you go onto my YouTube channel, you'll find a couple of years ago I did a video showing you how I actually make these panels, how I glued them up and planed them down. The advantage is using this, it's got a much better grain, there's no knots or anything in it, unlike most softwoods. Uh, it's fairly easy to cut and it's fairly strong, much stronger than softwood and you get a nice smooth finish on it. Always look out for old furniture. 
You often find people will, will destroy old pieces of furniture because it looks old fashioned or it's dark wood or something and they don't like it. And they'll buy this cheap foreign made MDF rubbish that only lasts a couple of years and they'll have to replace it. And they throw out this perfectly good furniture and it's a, a wonderful source of wood. This is a, a side off a drawer and it's, I'm not sure whether it is oak, it looks like oak actually. As you can see it's got the dovetails on the end. And, and that's off a, a, a post office desk drawer actually that was thrown out and it's perfectly good wood. You sand that down, there's some ready made wood for fret sawing or, or um, scroll sawing, whichever you want to call it. Now again on the subject of desks and drawers, this here is the bottom of a, a drawer that I've salvaged. Now, the thing about this is you'll find these old drawers, the plywood used in it is far superior to the rubbish you get today. Uh, the stuff, if you go into these DIY, these big DIY stores that sell everything, they do sell plywood, but my advice is don't buy it for doing fretwork because it's usually rubbish. They've got a, an outer, two outer sheets and inside it's a soft core which is absolutely awful stuff. Now this stuff they used in the old days, uh, this is probably pre-1960, is really good quality plywood and, and is excellent for doing fretwork. The thing you have to be careful for on, on this older timber is that sometimes they do have there's an oval there where there's obviously been an imperfection in it and they cut it out and replaced it with an oval. For most jobs it doesn't matter but you've got to be careful if you're doing fretwork, you don't want that in the middle of it but you can still use the rest of it. You look on the other side, you can see there's a couple here as well, look, there's one there and one there. It doesn't affect the wood, but like I say, if you're, if you're using it for fretwork, just be careful, look out for those and avoid them. But that's perfectly good wood for fretwork, so don't overlook that old furniture. Uh, there's another piece here, look. This is an, another one. This is a cupboard piece out of a cupboard door. And again, perfectly good wood, and that's just taken from stuff that people throw away. And, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. Now, my advice before you do any fret work, it's a good idea to give the, the, the work a sand down first before you do anything. Just give it a, a light sand in and make it as smooth as possible uh, because it is much easier to do the bulk of the sand in first. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to just cut the one out of this pattern, I'm going to cut two out at the same time. Now it's called stack cutting. You can cut more than two, I've actually cut five out. If you use thin enough wood you can cut five items out at the same time, saving a lot of time and there is also a, another good reason. So here's the piece of wood, the hardwood that I'm going to use and what I'm going to do, I'm going to make two together and so one will be cut out of plywood and one will be cut out of this bit of mahogany and then when they're finished I can choose which one I prefer best. So what you do is you, you actually stick the two pieces of timber together temporarily. Uh, don't use glue that you can't get apart. There's various ways of doing that and I will show you in a moment the way I'm going to choose for this. So what I do, I the two pieces of timber will be stuck together effectively and then the pattern will be stuck on the top of this and then I cut it out and then when it's finished I can take the two apart and I've got two separate pieces. Now cutting more than one out serves two purposes. Uh, actually the best thing to do, if you were cutting it in, in this, just this, if you use three sheets of this, what you would imagine is the top one would have your pattern on, which you can take off afterwards. The middle one would, would be the cleanest one. The bottom one will have cut out. When you're doing sawing, you'll always have a bit of cut out or break out of the bottom where the saw goes through, even if you're using reverse tooth blades, which I'll talk about later. So if you've got three, the one in the middle is protected in, in all ways. Uh, there's no pattern stuck on it and underneath it's got a nice piece of wood so it stops the cutout so the middle one will be actually perfect. So if you only want one it's always worth cutting three out if you can afford to waste the wood or if you want more than one. Now the bottom one is usable but it needs more sanding obviously. So for the purposes of this we're going to use the two pieces. There's my pattern. I'm going to stick that onto the top piece of wood uh, to make sure and that will be sacrificed. I'll glue that on in some way and uh, I'll cut round it and then I shall sandpaper it off. Now when you're doing this it's a good idea to cut roughly around the pattern part uh, so it makes it easier to locate it on the wood so I'm just going to cut round it with a pair of scissors and spoil my nice pattern that I've made. Don't cut it too near to the, to the lines. You don't have to do this but it makes it easier and it saves on the wood. So there's my design, now I'm going to offer it up to the plywood, make sure I've got the best side up showing, that's that like that look. 
and now I'm going to fit that on there. You don't have to have it square, you can have it whichever fit it the best fit actually, which is about like that. The next job is to stick the pattern onto the work. Now there are various ways of doing this. Uh, uh, some people put masking tape on the work and then stick the pattern onto the masking tape uh, and then you can peel it off, hopefully, but I find that a bit, bit fiddly. Probably one of the best ways is to buy self-adhesive printing paper uh, that you can peel the backing off and stick it straight on and then peel it off when you finish. But that's probably more expensive and being a scrimper I wouldn't dream of doing that so I just use simple paste or gum. Now in the old days you used to be able to get this stuff which is Gloy. But for some reason you can't buy it these days and this is the perfect stuff for sticking patches on but that's all I've got left in there. But in the absence of that you can use one of these. This is just a cheap simple glue pen. You can buy these in pound shops, usually a pack of four for a pound, so they're not expensive and this is more like water-based gum, which will do the job, but it is more sticky than the original paste and more difficult to get off, but it will work. Now whatever you do, don't use this for sticking your pattern on. It's perfectly good adhesive, you who it's very good stuff for a particular job, but don't use it to stick your pattern on because you'll wreck your work and you never get the pattern off. Just squeeze it out onto the work and spread it around like I say a brush is probably best but I can't be bothered with that so I just put it on like that now I just get my fingers and just go over it it's perfectly harmless this stuff by the way in case you're worried about it don't put too much on um because it will soak through the pattern and make it shrink and don't put too little on otherwise you'll have bubbles in it and it won't be any good so that's about it just wipe your hands off as you'll get all glue all over the pattern all right get your pattern and Put it on the timber like so. Roughly, make sure you get it in the right position because you won't move it. <coughs> get another piece of paper and just go over it just to smooth it down. Now I've sanded uh, both of these pieces of wood down prior to doing this so they're nice and smooth. Now the next thing we've got to do is stick the two pieces together. Uh, you can use double sided solid tape but sometimes it does make it difficult to get it apart and if you're doing delicate pieces it, it does sometimes snap the bits off if you're not careful. So in this case, uh, probably the best method is to use nails to hold it together. Once you've cut the basic outline, you can use sellotape around the edges to hold it together as well. So I often use both methods. Now I'm going to use these small half inch moulding pins. And uh, if, you, if you've got one of these, it's a good way of doing it. It's a, a push pin, they call it. And it's magnetic with a brass fitting. And you just drop your pin in there like that and it holds it in and then you can simply push it into the work. It, it makes it easier to start without like bashing your fingers. And all you've got to do, get your push pin, pop your pin in like that and that will hold it. And then just go to the work and poke it through. I'm going to put one in there because that part of the pattern is going to be cut out. Keep it away from the cut edges. If you haven't got one of these you can do it by hand, it's not a problem. Right, well that will be enough nails for, for that anyway. So what I'm going to do now, I'll show you now, don't leave them like that because for starters you'll find it difficult cutting out, the nails will get in the way of your hand and you'll probably catch your fingers on it and rip your fingers. So you've got to bash those all the way through and then you've got to be careful, they're going to stick out the other side here, uh, which you don't want because for one thing it will catch on your cutting table, apart from the fact it will mark the table, it will make it more awkward to work. So what you've got to do is bash these right through and then peel the ends over. I'll just nail that one through nailed it through, turn it over, cut the worst off, that's that, that's the worst bit off, and then just hold it firm on the end and just rivet it over like that so it's flush both sides. Then it will work smoothly on the table and I'll just go around doing this, that's all. So now you've got the work on there, now it's a good idea to, I shall trim these off before I start cutting because it makes it easier on the saw. If you've got a great big board like this to move around it's going to be a lot harder than a smaller piece. So I'm just going to trim these edges off. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is to drill the holes through the work piece, uh, ready to put the blade through when I'm doing the internal cutout. So I've got a small drill here, it doesn't need to be too tiny because most of these cutouts are quite large. So all you've got to do is drill holes where you've got to put the blade through. So I'm going to put one there, look. Now once you've drilled all your holes through, it is a good idea just to give the, the back a sanding because you'll get little burrs on the back here uh, where the drill bits come through, which will tend to sort of make it stick on the table. So it's a good idea just to get, remove these burrs with a bit of sandpaper, a bit of abrasive paper on a sanding machine if you've got it. 
just to smooth it down it makes it that much easier later on so I'll come back when I've done all the drilling and we're ready to start the sawing. Mm -hmm. 